What's up Simonix? Welcome to the last dev vlog of the year and of the decade. Today is day 19 of the Ionic holiday calendar. I'm a bit tired but I want to share with you the technology stack that I have planned for myself for the next year. Perhaps this will give you an idea or something that you would like to try as well. This is of course not a recommendation, there are other great stacks but here it is, my tech stack for the next year. So my personal technology stack evolved a lot over the years. I started initially by just doing uh, Objective-C and Swift development. I uh, went into the corporate world and had to work with Java. Uh, we were using Python. Then I picked up Swift. And then eventually I suddenly moved more closer to the web. And that's where I'm now living since basically a lot of years already. And first in that time I was always focused on the front end with just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever framework it was back then. But now over the years and as I turned self-employed I also figured out that it might be a good idea to be a full stack engineer. And so I think one, two years ago I picked up Node.js for the server side. I basically sticked around that domain since then. So my goal is definitely to be a full stack engineer which means I can build both the front side and I can also build the API. So that is assumption number one that is important for the technology stack that I use. Number two is that I really like to decouple both the front end and the back end. I know about applications like in the Java world with JSPs where everything is connected with the server. I think with Meteor, a more popular framework, it's the same that your server is also serving all your pages. And I'm not a big fan of this approach. I really like to have a clean API that I can work with. Uh, you can more easily separate the teams, one to focus on the back end, one to focus on the front end. Or if you happen to be like me, a solo engineer, it is still easier to just get started with one side of the things and you can still work on both ends. Requirement number three that I use for my technology stack is that I want to have the languages or frameworks that I use on the front end and back end closely related. For example, I don't want to have a .NET backend and then uh, Angular frontend. That would require me to pick up so many skills that I don't really have. I want to have something that is more or less in the same world. And with JavaScript, that is pretty easy. I think with Swift uh, for iOS, it's actually also possible these days to have Swift on the server side. A uh, really interesting topic. And then I, of course, want to stick to some of these languages that I already know. I don't plan for now to pick up anything completely new and therefore uh, guess what the framework of my choice is for the front end. Yeah, that wasn't really hard to figure out, wasn't it? It is, of course, Ionic. Of course, you know that I'm a huge Ionic fan, but not only because it helped me to build my own blog and academy and become self-employed. It is simply because it just works. In most of the cases, if you're not working with Cordova or encounter any strange Angular problems. Of course, over the years, I noticed the other frameworks. I noticed a lot about React and React Native, and I took a look at it. I noticed Native Script, and recently, a lot of people uh, were talking about Flutter. But for me, Ionic still feels very comfortable. Uh, I know by now a lot about Angular. And I'm still learning a lot of new things about Angular, so I don't really feel comfortable uh, now switching to React simply because I want to give it a try. I feel comfortable with Angular and I feel comfortable with Ionic. And also, by now I know a lot about Angular um, despite Ionic. So I build web applications with plain Angular, I combine it with Angular Material or I combine it with Bootstrap. Basically I've been able to pick up these Angular skills because I started with Ionic. So uh, I guess most people are starting with a different direction. They are starting with Angular and then at some point add Ionic on top, but for me it was the opposite direction. And for most of my projects I basically either need a mobile application or a website or both. And with Ionic it is just super easy I would say to get this result. If I just want to do for the web I could use Ionic or I could leave it out and just go with Angular and for mobile it is of course super easy to build apps with Ionic. Since Ionic is betting heavily on the web 
and it is working everywhere the web runs. It is for me the perfect choice for now. I don't plan to make any heavy calculation, uh, heavy applications or um, like games. In that case, of course, picking up something like Unity or going with native iOS development might be the better way. But since I have this broad approach to build products that are available either on the web or on the phone, I still think that Ionic is for me the best choice for now since I know a lot about it and also because it is in the JavaScript world which influences also my backend. I don't know if you actually noticed my new shirt in the full. I hope you know what this means. I really like it. What I wanted to say is because I use Ionic and Angular on the front end side and which is using JavaScript in general, I also try to pick something on the back end side that is closely related to this. And in the recent years I used basically Node.js, which works great. There are a lot of great frameworks. There's Koa, Hapi, um, Sales or do you just go with a plain express application? Really a lot of possibilities on the server side. That was great because it enabled me to use my JavaScript skills on the backend side. In the recent videos uh, along this year, you noticed that I suddenly picked Nest.js. Nest.js works great for me. Nest.js picked up a lot of momentum this year and last year. It was ahead in a lot of uh, surveys and for a reason because it really feels like you're using Angular on the server side and if you happen to have built any Angular application or any experience with Angular and you give Nest a try you will basically think you're in an Angular application. Because I already like Node.js on the server and Nest gives everything a bit more structure, you get a lot of more TypeScript stuff in Nest.js and many other comfortable things that you perhaps already expect from the Angular environment in general. Still, it is not really related to Angular. You can access everything you could access with a plain Node.js application. And of course, the deployment is also basically the same. Now, I already talked about this that I plan a little side project with Nest.js which I already started and I will definitely let you know more about this once we make progress on the project. If you haven't tried it out so far, maybe pick it up uh, during the holiday season if you have uh, some free time. It is really something I enjoy just like I enjoy writing Ionic Zip which, which just work if you add the components out of the box and Nest.js feels a bit like this so it really also just works. Now. If you uh, want to be a full stack engineer as well and perhaps don't really want to learn something new like Nest.js, an alternative that I also always consider for my project is of course Firebase. I would say you should definitely know about Firebase, how it works and have it in your uh, tool belt of skills because in some situations Firebase is just the best solution. There are as well cases where Firebase is not the best solution so if you only know about it and always pick it that might not be the right path but in general it is a great solution uh, in which you don't really need to write any backend code at all so you just have to pick up the internals of Firebase and the SDK a bit how to build queries, how to look collections and how to in general work with a no SQL database but that's that's all you have to learn it's not like you're learning something completely new alrighty then if you are a developer which happens to have other skills like Java Python flutter react already then of course switching to this stack might not be your best solution and you might have to look for a stick that matches your skills or if you really want to learn something new then give this stack a try. I don't know if this stack already has a name because there are all these fancy names like the mean stack, Mongo, Express, Angular, Node. Perhaps we need a name for this stack as well. Basically it's the NIA stack, right? Nest, Ionic, Angular and perhaps uh, MongoDB database then it would be NIA. Maybe a new name for a new cool tech stack. So there you have it. That's the last vlog episode of the year. I hope you enjoyed this preview for the next year already. I'm excited about all the new projects. And of course, I would love to know 
what's your technology stack for the next year is there something you want to try out in 2020 or is there anything you would like to get deeper into i'm really interested in your solutions and the technologies that you are using perhaps i will also take a look at them but that would look really dumb if i will have to get into xamarina or something i i don't think you want to see this anyway if you enjoyed the video as always please leave a like please subscribe to this channel this year we made 10 10k subscribers on top of the already existing 15k subscribers so thank you from the bottom of my heart next year or next week actually i will have another end of the year episode on the 25th of december so the last day of our calendar i hope you will stick with me until then and of course enjoy the rest of our ionic holiday calendar have a great rest and uh, a not too stressful holiday season and i will catch you in the next videos like always so enjoy your time this week and happy coding simon